Hi everyone and welcome back to our alpaca farm apiary which is where we've got our honey pour hives sponsored apiary for this season. Uh, I'm very grateful to honey pour who've sponsored this entire series of videos for the summer and we're using all of their equipment in this apiary uh, in its entirety. Uh, we've just uh, completed one inspection and come on to the second hive and discovered that we've got queen cells and I thought it would be an opportunity to show you the artificial swarm method of swarm control in action. Uh, we've already begun it and I thought that it would be an opportunity to, to just walk you through the whole process. So the position that I'm standing in at the moment is the position that the original hive was in uh, just five minutes ago. During the inspection, within a couple of frames, I discovered that we'd got some sealed queen cells and have decided that because they're not producing lots of honey, we're going to use this opportunity to split them into two colonies and create an additional colony using the artificial swarm method. There are lots of versions of the artificial swarm and uh, they're attributed to lots of different people. Uh, but the basic principles are exactly the same. We're looking to take the three component parts of a swarming colony, which is the queen, the flying bees, and the brood, and we're looking to split those. So what we're actually doing is we're taking the brood away from the queen and the flying bees, and therefore the queen and the flying bees will hopefully believe that they have swarmed and that uh, desire to produce more queen cells uh, will be um, either reduced or will go completely. So what we've got is over here I've moved the original hive. So this is the hive that was in position A if you like and this is position B and we found the queen and the queen is now in this colony, in this hive, currently sat on one single frame. And this frame actually has some queen cells on it. So what I need to do is to just check for queen cells in the rest of the uh, original hive that's at position B before I actually remove those queen cells, because if they're the only queen cells, I don't want to go through this process and then find that uh, I don't have a queen cell to use. So what we have here is the queen and all of the flying bees, as they go off to forage, will come back to their original position to the queen here. All of the brood, except for one frame containing as little brood as possible, really, will uh, be in position B. So that's all of the brood over there. So what I need to do now is to just carry out my inspection with the original hive over there. The flying bees that are coming out are coming back here so it makes inspecting the, the colony that much easier. And if you were doing this in your backyard, in your, in your own garden, you could actually just put a roof on both of these, go away and have a cup of coffee and come back in 30 minutes time and the number of bees in the original hive that's now at position B will be greatly reduced. So there'll be a lot less bees here for you to inspect. So I'll just grab the smoker and then we'll carry on the inspection and just check for queen cells in this colony, leaving the new hive on its own to allow the flying bees to return there. So now we have just a standard inspection we're just going to go through this and check for more queen cells. And if we find some good quality queen cells, then we can keep one of those queen cells here. And already I can see that there's another queen cell at the bottom here. And there's another one here. Now this is interesting because we've got quite a nice queen cell here at the corner of the frame. Another queen cell here in the middle of the frame at the bottom but that's twisted and um, leaning at an angle against the bottom of the frame. So if you were looking for a good queen cell, I would suggest that the queen cell here in this bottom corner is a good queen cell, 
and the one at the bottom here is not so good. However, I have had colonies produce emergency queens from some really pretty awful looking queen cells and actually they've turned out to be really good queens so you can never be too sure. However, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these and initially leave this queen cell in the corner. Now, you could, if you wanted to, cut out queen cells and produce multiple queens from one colony. So if you were looking to produce lots of queens, you could split this down. Uh, the nukes that we have are four frame nukes. So we could, in actual fact, produce um, a couple of nukes from this, maybe three or four nukes uh, with one frame of food, one frame of brood and containing uh, a queen cell. Uh, but for the purposes of this exercise, this uh, video, we're going to just knock down all of the queen cells except for one. And that's a really important point as well, because if you leave more than one queen cell, the chances are they're going to swarm on it. We've got another queen cell at the bottom here at a bit of a strange angle. So we'll destroy that one. And all you have to do is to just squeeze them between your thumb and forefinger. And that's sufficient to uh, mean that they won't then develop. So no queen cells now on that frame. I leave a gap to the frame that I'm going to retain the queen on. So I know that that's uh, where the queen cell is, pardon me. Um, so I can keep track of where the queen cells are, where the one that I'm going to keep is. And that means I'm not going to accidentally leave any queen cells behind. So generally this colony has been quite a good colony for us, quite a strong colony. It was uh, quite a nice colony last year, produced uh, a nice excess of honey for us. And so I'm quite happy to produce queen cells and new queens from this colony. So again, we have a queen cell at the side here, another nice looking queen cell. And then on the opposite side, we have another queen cell at a bit of an odd angle. So we'll destroy that one. And now we're left with a decision as to whether we retain the first one or we retain this one. So I'm going to leave that one as well, leaving a little gap so I can remind myself that that's where the queen cell is. We have several queen cells on this frame. And one of the things that you uh, can do just to ensure that you're getting all of the queen cells is to shake the bees off. So we'll pop this frame back in and just shake it down and then stop suddenly and tap the top with the fleshy part of our thumb and our hand and that shakes all the bees off. And you can see that we've got a queen cell here which we'll remove and then on the other side, queen cells. Now if you shake the bees off, one of the things you need to remember is that you could dislodge the larvae that's inside that queen cell. So don't ever shake the frame if you think you might need to use one of those queen cells because you could inadvertently destroy the queen that's developing inside. So we've got one queen cell on this frame and one queen cell on this frame. You can continue through. Now normally I would go through this process uh, a lot quicker than I'm doing here. And this colony seems to enjoy producing queen cells at the bottom corner of the, the frames. So we need to just make sure we get all of those. But also check the rest of the frame and you can use your finger just to move the bees away from the sides. 
and then on the reverse side we have one queen cup there and nothing more so that can go back in and if you take your time there's no need to rush with this if you're only just starting out with your beekeeping there is absolutely no pressure to have to rush through as long as the weather's good and the sun is now out and it's warming up quite nicely. So we've got one queen cell there and that looks as if that's all there is. So what I'm going to do now is just shake the bees off and see if we've missed any queen cells. And sure enough, we have one additional queen cell in the bottom corner. And if we hadn't shaken the bees off and we'd missed that, then we could well find ourselves with a swarming colony because we've left more than one queen cell behind. And then onto the final frame. And I'm just going to shake the bees off this one. Queen cell at the side, which we can destroy, one in the middle. So now we have just two queen cells. We need to decide what we're going to do, which one we're going to keep. So we have the queen cell in the corner here. And that's a nice straight queen cell. So we'll Maybe keep that one as it's in the middle of the brood area. And this one is maybe a little shorter. Uh, to be honest, there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't keep both of these and split the colony down into, um, into nukes. But we're going to remove it so that we've left just the one. So now we have just one queen cell. Next thing for me to do is to just mark so I've marked the top bar of the frame that has the queen cell on it. Just move this wax out of the way and now I can close up this colony and the important thing is for us to come back and check for other emergency cells. There are some eggs in some of the frames. So what we need to do is to just make sure that the bees don't produce more queen cells. So although we've taken down all of the queen cells we can see, there are a few eggs in some of these cells. So what we need to do is to make sure that uh, we come back and check for any subsequent queen cells. So that's a little bit tight because we've taken a frame out of here. That frame is a little bit tight against the wax comb that's been made on the opposing faces of the frames there. So we're going to pop in one of these new plastic frames. This one's uncoated. So I'm a little bit dubious as to whether the bees will get on it and draw it straight without it being coated in wax, which is what we've done with the other frames, but it does provide a nice little gap. So this colony has now been inspected. We've got one queen cell and we can close these down and then go back to uh, position A and just remove the queen cells from the frame that the queen is on. So let's, uh, let's just do that. So I'll just pop a cover board on top of these. Uh, this colony has plenty of food so they don't need any additional food and then we've got a telescoping roof to go on top of this hive. And then I'll come back and pop the strap on 
uh, once we've settled down this colony. So coming back to this hive, what we have now is our queen on the frame and we've got some queen cells here. So I'm just going to remove these queen cells. And one last check. I'm going to, not going to shake the bees off this frame because we've got our queen on here. She's got an area over here where she can continue to lay. And that's one of the reasons we give her this frame but it also means that they have a lot less bees and hopefully they feel as though they've swarmed. So we can close these up now. It's as simple as that. We've, we've removed the, um, the queen cells that were there. Pop the queen excluder on because we don't want the queen going up into the supers. And this super can go on. Uh, this second super is actually, uh, doesn't have that many bees in it. Uh, they're not really working it, but we're going to leave it on for now. I'm just gonna shake the bees off the top so I don't crush any bees. Don't want to crush any bees where we can possibly help it. And then this can be wiggled back on. and then the roof goes back on top. So that's our artificial swarm manipulation completed. The original position, this is position A, and had the hive originally. We've split that down, we've moved the hive over to position B. We now have the queen and the flying bees in this colony and we have all of the brood and a single queen cell in that colony. We'll come back in a few days time, maybe five days time, check for additional queen cells, and then we'll allow them to help that queen to emerge, to mate, and hopefully go on to set up her own colony in her own right. Um, my thanks to Honeypore Hives for supplying us with the equipment and sponsoring us this season for this season long uh, series of videos. If you've got any questions, then do take a look in the description below where you can uh, find links to my website and to my Patreon page, and also to Honeypore where you can ask all of those relevant questions. Do join me next time when we'll have a look at these two colonies to see how they're progressing. But for now, thanks for watching.